Hey, I'm Abena and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a travel vision board for this year. This is my vision board from 2021 and I remember when I was making this vision board for 2021 I thought weird because we were in the middle of a pandemic, we still are, I remember that time there was like the Delta variant and there was like so many things happening, so many world events and it just felt like well what's the point like everything's out of control in the world and in my life but I would say that having a vision board really grounds you in the goals and the aims you have for the year and so you don't feel like you're living like randomly sometimes that that really helps you mentally and with your well-being as well and I think having a vision board really helps visualize I like writing and I know a lot of people would like to write down their goals and their aims I think there is value in that but in past years I've written down my goals and my aims in a journal in a diary and I've thrown that book somewhere and I've never looked back on it throughout the year whilst a vision board every single day you wake up it's on your wall like you pass by able to glance by it and just like be instantly prompted or reminded about the goals and aims you set yourself for that year so you can continuously like just reflect and keep moving towards them. Step one of creating a vision board is to get a pen and paper. This can be a journal, this can be like a planner and really spend quality time writing down and thinking and reflecting on and praying on and meditating on the goals and aims you want to achieve in the year. Like what do you really want out of the year? When it comes to travel the tip I would give you when you're thinking about your goals and aims is to not be too extreme. When I say extreme, I mean in two ways. So the first way is that many times we are very pessimistic, especially when it feels like our travel goals are quite unattainable, therefore other people are not for people like me. You know what I mean? In a time of a pandemic, let me not even like think about it. And I think when you're in that pessimistic state, that makes you struggle in setting down goals and aims. The second level of extremity you can have is when you're too specific with your goals. So you say, I want to go to New York, but I want to be there with this person on Brooklyn Bridge on the exact time, the exact day. And it's like, yo, you setting your goals and you having a vision board doesn't make you God over your life. How do you know you're going to be able to get to New York, to Brooklyn Bridge, like with that person? Like there's so many variables and you really don't want to put yourself in a box where you don't achieve that specific goal you put. When actually there's an underlying reason why you wanted that goal and maybe that underlying thing you want to achieve is more attainable than being very specific. What do you actually want to do? Maybe you actually have a certain theme you're going for. So it's not saying I want to hike this exact mountain. Your actual underlying desire is to go out of your comfort zone when you're traveling this year. Like, oh, actually, I want to take more trips this year that, that give me the opportunity to hike and to overcome my fear of heights. And that is the more general goal that's more attainable and more flexible. A second way to avoid being super specific is by grouping your goals. So you may have goals that say, I want to go to Ghana, Nigeria, and Togo. Underlying desire is actually that you want to visit more of the African continent. So you want to group all those goals into one general goal that is, I want to visit more African countries this year. Even if you don't make it to Ghana, Nigeria and Togo and you make it to Ghana, Nigeria and Senegal, it's not really feeling like a failure because you didn't meet the specific points. You actually feel like you still made progress because you still met your underlying desire. And for a travel vision board, I would recommend having max two to three goals. You don't want to overwhelm yourself that you struggle to budget or save up towards those goals or you find time to make those trips. Step two of creating a travel vision board is gathering images for the vision board itself. This is a very fun part of the stage. I would recommend using the website Pinterest to find images because Pinterest images are very aesthetic, wonderful, dreamy. The kind of images you want on a travel vision board, you want to take the two or three goals you have for travel this year. And when you go on Pinterest, you want to search keywords related to your travel goals, meaning words that bring up images are related to your travel goals that really communicate your travel goals to you. So for example, if your goal is to travel to more African countries this year, you want to type in Africa, you want to type in African country, you want to type in African travel, African culture, a food. When you find an image you like, right click on it and save it to your computer. Before you even start this exercise, I recommend creating a folder on your desktop that's called Travel Vision Board so that you can save all your images into one place. If you're doing a full Travel Vision Board, I recommend going ham and finding 25 to 30 images. If your travel vision board is a small section of like your bigger vision board for this year, then you just need about five to 10 images, that will do. Step number three is to put together the vision board. A website I recommend to do this with is Snapfish. This is not sponsored by the way. I just really like Snapfish because it's a printing website that allows you to create the vision board on the website with a really easy to use user interface and then seamlessly sort of order that vision board to be printed and delivered to your 
house where you can pick it up. Netfish operate in the UK, they operate in the US. They also deliver to like 29 European countries overall. They're widely available, so if they're not in wherever you are, or whatever region you are in the world, then I'd recommend using like a similar sort of online printing website. A second option is to use Microsoft Word and print from home. So on Snapfish, you're gonna go to the home menu and you're gonna select on prints. You're gonna go sideways until you reach the poster prints menu. I recommend selecting the 18 by 12 inch size. This is slightly bigger than A3, but it's what I've had this past year and I recommend because it's a decent size that fits on any wall without kind of being humongous, but also not being too small so it can be seen from anywhere in your room. If you're using Microsoft Word, then go for A3. So once you've chosen the size on Snapfish, you need to choose the finish. This is super important. You need a gloss finish. That way, your vision board will preserve through the year because when it collects dust or you get a stain on it, you can just easily clean it with a dry rag and it's just harder to tear like gloss paper. So if you are DIY printing this at home or using Microsoft Word, then I recommend at least getting gloss paper. It's really important. So after choosing your finish, you're now going to create the project. Go to select photos for your project. And I think Snapfish is really great in that you can get photos from your Instagram, from Facebook. It's really flexible. But we are prepared. So we're going to go to my computer and we're going to select all the images in our vision board folder. If you're using like a normal computer, just hold down the control key and then you can select multiple images. If you're using a MacBook, then hold down the command key and select all the images in that folder. When you're done uploading those images, you're going to select done and you're going to get a screen like this. So first thing you want to do is the menu on the right, you're going to click on the orientation button just to make your vision board a landscape vision board. I just prefer this, I think aesthetically looks nicer. Then on the menu on the left, you're going to start dragging your images onto the blank canvas and arranging them. Group them according to your specific goals. But don't be afraid to allow them to overlap, to allow them to be a bit irregular. Like your vision board is meant to be a bit of a collage, so that's completely fine. Have fun with it, be creative. On Word, if you're using Microsoft Word, you would just insert your photos into the dock and then crop them and place them as needed. Back to Snapfish. There is a background button on the left hand side menu where you can also change the color of your background. I personally prefer to keep it white and clean and just let the colour come from the images, but that's a personal preference. There's also an embellishment menu with a ton of different shapes and like clip art designs for you to sprinkle across your vision board. These can make your vision board a bit aesthetic, so I'm going to add a few for a bit of razzle dazzle. In Word, you can also add these clip arts by going to like the shapes button. After embellishments, you also have the text menu on the left hand side of Snapfish. You can click on add text um, and then you may use this opportunity to name your vision board. I would just put the year. The whole idea with vision board is to visualise your goals, not to write them down so much. You don't want writing to sort of crowd out the images on your board. So keep the writing to a minimum in my opinion. After typing what I want to type. I highlight the text and then I go back into the text menu and then I adjust the size and the font so I can see what it's actually meant to look like. And that's it. Step number four is getting this thing printed off. A lot of you may prefer to keep your vision board digital. This works like if you have it as like a background to your phone, home screen, or if you have it as like your desktop wallpaper. But I just think that a lot of the time when we're using our devices, we are either on an app, we're on social media or on our emails, and like we're not really looking at our desktop or phone, home screen, wallpapers as such. So to print it off on Snapfish, you're just going to review your order, add it to your shopping cart, create an account or just log in via Gmail or so, and then you're going to get it ordered. They usually print an order to you in a couple of days or you can choose a store that's near you where they can print off for you in person. And if you're printing off from home, just remember to make sure you get gloss paper or a durable type of paper so that your vision board lasts throughout the year. So once you've printed it off, it should look like this. 
a gloss sheen colorful vision board that catches your eye now your final step is to put up in your room put it somewhere that you're gonna see every single day maybe in front of your bed or I'm gonna put it right by my desk so when I put from home I can be right over it every single day just get like sellotape or like I'm gonna use blue tack and stick it up Looks so beautiful.